Thank you, Rob. Mr. Froilan Grate. Uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and mabuhay. It's an honor for me to be here with you today and to share solutions coming from our part of the world. Why waste? We've been asking these questions ourselves for quite some time. And for us working in the zero waste movement, uh, it's a, it's a, the question is, why do we produce waste in the first place? For some of us, the question could be, why talk about waste? The prevalent mindset in some parts of this in, uh, in our country is out of sight, out of mind. As, as asked a while ago, when you throw away something, where is away? For a lot of us in this room, the answer we experience firsthand. And for us in the Philippines, we've tried to discover that. We've conducted surveys in um, communities that we work with, and we found out that 60% of those who we surveyed admitted to burning waste as a means of disposing it. And another 40% practice illegal dumping, usually in bodies of water. For example, in this house built on, uh, on stilts, the traditional way of throwing is to put it under the house and let the rising tides flush it away. But where is away? I'm based in Manila, but I grew up in an island in the Philippines, and mornings are usually spent swimming. So it is a personal issue for me as well. So where is away? Each person in the Philippines produces about 0.2 to 0.6 kilograms of waste per person per day. That's a lot lower than the numbers for developed countries, for example. But when we look at the typical waste profile, we see this as an opportunity. 52% of the waste in the Philippines are organics which can be composted, which is good for the soil and good for the climate. Another 41% can be recycled, given the right infrastructure. So we're left with only 7% that are to be disposed of. Or better yet, for companies to actually redesign their products and packaging so that we produce less of these waste that are so worthless that they have the biggest potential to, for leakage in our environment. But I'm here to share a story and a solution. And I'll start with this from um, Barangay Fort Bonifacio. It's a village in Metro Manila with 3,000 3, households and 15,000 population. So imagine every day all of this waste from this community are brought to this transfer station. That's nine tons of waste every day. And these could be the same waste that could end up in our oceans or probably even our MPAs if these wastes are not managed. The good thing is this community recognized the problem and they partnered with Mother Earth Foundation to actually find a solution and that is a zero waste program for this community. In less than six, less than six months from this picture, it is now like this. From a dump site, it is now an eco park and a materials recovery facility where because of this program in just one community alone, they were able to generate 21 green jobs to collect waste from all households. So there's no reason for people to throw waste anywhere because it's collected for free every day by these 21 waste collectors. And 95% of the residents complied in the first six months. These enabled the community to divert 80% of their waste. That is just one community. San Fernando, another city in the Philippines, implemented the same program in all of their villages. And because of this, they were able to uh, build 180 community materials recovery facilities, create 200 green jobs, and allow them to divert 78% of their waste from landfills. This was achieved through door-to-door -door information and education campaign, segregated collection, and livelihood for waste pickers. And Income for waste workers increased by 270%. So we see that these solutions are not only good for the ocean, they're also good for the people. Talking about finance, these numbers are what cities in Metro Manila, the capital in the Philippines, are spending on waste. And one city is spending almost a billion pesos. Compare this to San Fernando, only spending 12 million pesos as opposed to 70 million pesos. They're saving 58 million pesos every year by shifting towards the zero waste program. 
and per person they're only spending 25 pesos as compared to 1,000 pesos in other cities without a zero waste program. And for a lot of these cities, looking at all the ways to be dumped in landfills, they don't have the resources, they don't have the money to pay for tipping fees, much less to invest in an incinerator. But it's not just in the Philippines, it's happening all over the world. It's happening in India, it's happening in other cities in the Philippines, and it's happening, for example, in India, they were able to integrate millions of waste workers. In Europe, they have hundreds of zero waste cities. In the US, we have San Francisco, and more cities are turning towards a zero waste system. And if you're interested to know more about this, we have case studies on our website, you can learn more. And I'm happy to announce that um, two days ago, recognizing this problem, we've launched, an, we're part of a global movement to address the problem of plastic pollution. Break free from plastic, which is also our hashtag. Thanks to the support of Oak Foundation and Marisla, we're able to grow in just two days. From 60 organizations, we're now close to 300 organizations, and it's growing. And we hope you could be part of it. Our ultimate goal is a future free of plastic pollution. It's a future we believe in and are creating together. Thank you and good morning. Thank you, Froyland. Very inspiring. Can we please have Matt Carstens?